You are 14 or 15 and you just found out about this awesome thing called Warhammer. You are super excited about it and also very keen for some of that action feel nerdiness and involves moving toy soldiers, which is how your mom calls them, although you constantly remind her that they are called miniatures, painted with cool colors on tables with tiny forests, houses, runes and castles. You open the first box of minis that you have ever bought with your hard safe pocket money and then proceed to spend the next five hours trying to figure out how to assemble them. Then, confused, you give up, put them in a drawer and forget about them forever. Does that sound familiar? Probably not, because Games Workshop went through great pains to make sure something prevented this from happening. And the way they did this is something that nowadays we take for granted when we open a new game. My name is Miguel, this is Rush Watch, and in this video, let me take you through the memory lane of things that were great in the hobby and talk about Monopose goodness. Those of us who grew up in the 90s were treated to some of the coolest stuff Games Workshop had ever released. And one of the things that most people don't include on the list of most awesome things Games Workshop ever produced is these humble plastic miniatures that look all the same and were rather simple by today's standards. But I do, oh yes I do. And there are several reasons why I think Monopose is one of the best things Games Workshop could ever have done and why I believe they made the best way for new blood to enter the arena of tabletop war games. Plastic injection was invented a long time ago. In 1872, Isaiah and John Hyatt invented a machine that was used to mold buttons, combs and similar items. The machine was simple by today's standards and many different changes happened between the humble products of the late 19th century and the wonders of today's plastic industry. But it is undeniable that some of the goodness you are paying for today at your local hobby store had its roots of buttons and comps. Fast forward to the late 20th century, Games Workshop started creating plastic miniatures. Citadel miniatures had been traditionally created using metal alloys that originally included lead, which was phased out in 1997 due to health issues. Lead, if you are not aware, is quite poisonous, and although the Romans loved drinking it mixed with wine, heavy metals should not be consumed beyond auditory means. I'm looking at you, Man of War fans. No, no. Not that one, this one. The first plastic miniatures Citadel ever created were 60mm scale and were intended to be released along with the fighting fantasy books. They wouldn't really fit in Warhammer neither back then nor any time afterwards. They resemble more plastic toys than miniatures. But this first foray into plastics taught Games Workshop some valuable lessons on working with it and paved the way for the next plastic miniatures that the Nottingham company will make. In 1985, Games Workshop decided to start making plastic miniatures for Warhammer. These first miniatures were called Psycho Styrene. The Psycho Styrene... The Psycho Styrene... Bruh. The Psycho Styrene miniature was a dwarf sprue with different head and arm variants. Emboldened by this new project, later came the Drastic Plastic Miniature, which took the shape of an orc. Although the details were not as crisp as what we nowadays can find on the market, they were indeed a revolutionary idea that would help the mass production of miniatures at affordable prices for the consumer. They cost 75 pence for three sprues, which is the equivalent of around two pounds nowadays. And if you wanted to buy them in bulk, a regiment of 30 will cost six pounds or around 17 pounds with prices adjusted to inflation at today's rate. Considering how much five minis can cost sometimes nowadays, the price was very affordable and this meant that players could get into the game more easily. After this initial foray into the plastic world, Games Workshop grew a little bolder and in 1987 they released both the famous RT-01 Space Marines, which had 30 multi-component Games Workshop money-making machines, and the Fantasy Regiment box, which included elves, dark and plain, dwarfs, orcs, goblins and skaven for a total of 60 miniatures. The sprue was made in such a way that you will get one of each race in it, and it seemed like a great way to share a box with your friends. From here onwards, plastic will become an integral part of everything we know Games Workshop, opening the path for more games. These new releases will be how some of us will get to know the hobby and the universes where the games took place, and make us addicted to the most expensive plastic goods on the market. But enough history, let's get to the real topic at hand, monopose. When you think of a monopose figure, 
what do you see? The word monopose means that we have one single pose on a miniature. For the sake of making things clear, I will also discuss some of the minis that had optional heads, legs or arms, but did allow to be built without glue. This of course opens the options a little bit. Pure monopose miniatures will basically be one single lump of plastic. Whether the miniature included a shield or not was rather irrelevant for the status of pure monoposery. I just made that up, yeah. These were absolutely optional pieces and the miniatures themselves are still easily identifiable as either an orc or a beastman with or without the shield. Monopose are among my favorite miniatures of the 90s and I still collect them whenever I have the chance to do so. They were the introduction for many of us to our hobby and they are an absolute blast to paint and play with. Nowadays you can find them for really cheap in bundles as people consider them of lower quality and it is never too late to find a few badly painted ones, dunk them in brake fluid, detol, simple green or isopropyl alcohol and paint them the way they were deserved to be painted when they were injected in those molds. So why do I believe that this was, if not the best, at least one of the best ways for us to play with toy soldiers? These are the main reasons. Number one, easy to build. You just got a new regiment of orcs and you want to have them fielded immediately to have some games with your friend Alex who will bring his dark elves to the store on Saturday. You have a couple of days to get them ready to battle during the evenings when you get home after school. Well, you could basically get them off the box, put them on their bases and if you were handy you will have enough time left to get them somewhat painted before the big day. As a kid, with basic modeling skills, this was perfect entry point. Easy to get them ready for games. This is the doctrine Games Workshop will use for all the starter kits from then onwards and for good reason. You can basically open the box, clip the minis from the sprue, just start playing games in an hour or so. For you it means the Monopose Dude box could be open in the store and filled it within minutes. This kind of accessibility made them great and it is something I sorely miss when I simply want to have minis to play with without the fuss of plastic glue being used, if you really care about that as a kid. Number two easy to paint. The Pona Pose miniatures do have another thing that makes them great, how easy it is to paint them. Having only one type of miniature to do over and over again allows you to learn all the nooks and crannies, which means that it was very simple to start learning where the belts, the gems, the pouches, the daggers, the grenades and other small details were at. After painting one or two, you actually knew very well which paint will go next and your process will be optimized very easily. It could get repetitive, that is true, but the results and speed were worth the grind. Number three, the price. Compared to the metal blisters of the era, buying a few boxes of the monopose miniatures ensured you will have much needed basic troops at a budget price. You could build whole units with them, but where they actually did sign is when you combine them with a few different metal models from a command group. Look at that middle hammer goodness. Oh yeah. Number four, sturdy. Monopose are sturdy, reliable mini. They will fall off a table, bounce a couple of times, and they will get back to the game. No problem. Most of us, I'm pretty sure we can vouch for how sturdy they are by remembering how we used to transport them to and from games. Chucking them all together in an amalgamation of plastic that will look like a can of SpaghettiOs. But the minis endure and we are forever thankful for it. Number six. Or number five. I'm not sure. Charisma. Say what you want about the skins on the fifth edition starter set. They have aged like good wine. Those old Skavens, they look great. They have all the things needed to let us know who they are in the world they inhabit and what their purpose is in it. Space Orcs from 2nd edition Warhammer 40k for example. Big Nasty Green? Check. Big Daka Daka Device? Check. Big Chapa? Check. They mean business and they let you know it as soon as they get out of the box. But not everything is perfect. Now, let's check the cone. Number one, to Sammy for Rebel. The same org we saw before that's become boring after what? Mostly in units where there is an expectation of a little randomness, such as with horde armies. For elves and space marines, it is fine to look the same. Those elves do look magnificent, ranked up with the spears, to be honest, but Skaven do look a little bit weird. Number two, size is a little off sometimes. Some of the miniatures seem to be scaled a little different from what is expected to look like, and I guess plastic does make you look fat. You can always argue that there are people of all sizes and complexions, but it does look a little off, and this was one of the reasons why people would prefer sticking to metal sometimes. Number three, bare bone simple. 
The minis do have details, but experienced modelers like making sure there's do have some extra stuff. Bags, pouches, capes, scabbards, extra weapons, grenades, all these add personality to the miniature. Unfortunately, the boxes that came with this and just included the miniatures and maybe a couple of shield options, which was fine for simplicity, but not for personalization. Will it have hurt making an extra sprue with, you know, some options for swapping weapons or adding some extra stuff, I, I don't know. It will have made a big difference and the boxes much better. It will be hard to imagine our hobby will have become what it is nowadays without monopose miniatures. Hence, why I believe they are by far one of the most influential developments of our addiction to plastic and tiny soldiers. Do you want to see how I paint some other cool stuff from the 90s? How about checking this video out? My name is Miguel, this is Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Un beso. Adios.